kind i thought of creating a network and continue to increase the network globally so that where people come through their writing writing is my medium that is what i understand and calligraphy not always has to be beautiful it can be expressive at the expense of being beautiful which is absolutely all right according to me then collect those stories collect those things and then keep presenting them from time to time in front of people so that people not only get to know about what what is happening around them but also what is happening in the other parts of the world whether it is celebration or whether it is expression of uh, of uh, whether it is a political discourse or 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 whatever that way another another level of knowledge sharing is going to come up presently this kind of a knowledge sharing newspapers are there in every country movies are there in every country music is there in every country but where is the calligraphic art which is based on based on the the places ethos and the, and the news and and the expression and and the emotions of the people who who are uh, who are behind behind those or who are witnesses to to those events this is this is the thought on uh, on which uh, we presently in this exhibition we have been able to uh, you know reach out to uh, 15 countries and uh, more than 30 people 30 artists uh, beautiful people joined in and uh, this is just the beginning we have uh, this has to grow this has to grow to fast hundreds and then thousands and then lakhs so that you know the story should be coming out from every nook and corner of of the world and presented before the people and it should be an ongoing and a constant process because one thing which i i have learned one thing which pandemic has taught me is that now the wheel of time runs 24 hours a day it is not divided into 9 to 5 anymore and there are no time zones there is no difference me working here you working somewhere else is just exactly one and the same thing now there is no time limit you could be working at any at, at any uh, any point of time so this makes the whole process very very fast and not and then another thing because of the platforms like these it is so instantaneous you can plan an exhibition in something like 10 days 15 days 20 days otherwise to create an event i have done those a uh, few of those events like that they take a you know planning of something like 6 7 months at least and with what end again only the influential people are able to get across to those exhibitions they may not have very powerful thing to say or very powerful art with them but because of their influence to reach across to those kind of uh, places and uh, and exhibitions well it is a repeat of faces which you see every time in most of the exhibitions why should that happen and another thing why can't a five year old be a part of this kind of a calligraphic movement he has a story to tell and why can't you know somebody who is very senior he can't he can all everybody can just join in idea is that uh, how passionate you are about calligraphy and how desperate you are to tell something when when these two things match then a uh, net result is in my because i am i am an artist working in calligraphy my net result is going to be a sheet of paper or a canvas small format large format it doesn't matter with these thought we have this is our second exhibition in fact we put up the first exhibition under bhasha kriti and with the same team ignca and unesco which was last year exactly same days and that time because the thought had uh, they were non pandemic days everything was physical then so it needed a lot of planning but we did not have too much time to plan at that time so in whatever little bit of time we had we put up a show in which we explored the the languages and calligraphic styles and the scripts of india india itself is extremely rich when it comes to uh, scripts in fact uh, we'll be surprised that Uh, this is one single country which has got uh, presently functioning more than 14 scripts are uh, are the ones in which we are working compare this to single script which is shared in entire europe you write every language in the same script and then <laughs> look at india which has got so many so so many scripts so there is a lot and tons and tons of work uh, tons of uh, uh, scripts that that we are working with varied exploration 
and all the scripts that we have are thousands of years old so we need to in fact roman script also latin script is also extremely old because it is a direct descendant from the greek alphabet and greek alphabet is one of the oldest in the world with these last years we put up a show in which uh, we worked on all the 22 india has got 22 official languages in its charter and uh, you can do the official work in any of these 22 languages we explored these 22 languages and all the scripts which are functional today we worked in fact in 14 scripts and we put up a, a show which was a physical show uh, we made a collection of approximately about uh, 30 artworks which are still in the collection of idnca then when pandemic happened and uh, everything got stopped this time we were not too sure how would we able to do that we were only hoping that uh, something should open up at least some vaccine should be there so that people start then we realized that from september october onwards people started working partially and working from home of course and even these days uh, most of the people here are also operating from home only then this so again we started thinking now at that time we were all used to working from home working remotely and uh, then then thought why not now again let's push and to do something on the same lines last year we wanted to last year when we were working we were clear in our mind that this year we would be doing an international show then we thought of doing this international show this year in a in a remote way in a virtual way with that thought in mind i think we started off from something like uh, december or so when we started reaching out and uh, then we, the thought began to come in and we took something about one and a half to two months of time interacting with everyone putting all the partnerships and all the all all the team and the entire team together and then uh, then came in the challenge now that the artworks were being uh, were, uh, were were coming up how to present them this was very very important what can you do you can either stay straight away put them up and then say yeah, this is the place and this is the artist this is the artwork that's not exciting he thought that let's do something in which we uh, let's take people on a virtual journey through through and uh, through an exhibition where you know uh, let there be the paintings there is a painting the best place for a painting to be is on a wall if you if you are not putting a painting on a wall then you're you're not doing justice we thought that yes let's put up all the paintings on the wall and then uh, that thus came the idea of doing something in three dimensions and then you know creating a wall for every artist so that the paintings and uh, you know uh, they can be best shown in the best possible environment we made the best possible effort that we could of course we'll be doing a lot better job next time this time the time frame was a little less next time it's going to be more and then it will be much much more elaborate and i'm sure number of artists will also increase and our uh, presentation will also get more uh, what you call uh, more impressive but then uh, one thing i would like to mention because I, I worked on this exhibition you all must have noticed one thing that as an uh, as a curator i have taken some liberties with the artworks that is the sizes the actual sizes of the art, artworks came to me i realized that they were you know from two to two and a half feet on the larger size they were to a4 size which is just this much if i present this kind of a, this size of an artwork on a computer screen it becomes so minuscule and so small that it almost looks like a thumbnail it 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 you know when you are looking at it in the in physical form then it is very impressive but if i make a thumbnail out of it on a screen then it's it tends to the aura the glory of the artwork tends to get lost then the liberty that i took is that i i put them larger than life all the artworks even if they were small in size i put them in a way that you know they are like occupying the wall the aura of the artworks was retained in fact it was increased and then the camera angles which i used for uh, you must have seen that is uh, i have tried my best to project the artworks in the best possible way along with the artist all the artists all the walls that are that I, I created a wall for each artist separate and then their photographs which are also 
in scale. In fact, my all the my drawings are to the scale. So every uh, photograph that I have put is in the size of something like about five feet. And artworks are also something which were A4 size, which when when they came to me in digital form, when I put them on the wall, they were increased to the size of something like about five feet or six feet. And that is the reason why uh, you. I, I think I've been able to buy, rest is upon the feedback that I, I get from all of you. How much successful I've been on this, uh, uh, on this, in this approach of mine. But my idea was to present it in the best possible way so that the glory of the artwork, art, artwork is retained. With that thought, uh, I think we have all seen the movie. But for the benefit of those who have not seen the movie, I'm going to now put that movie up. And then uh, we'll continue the conversation after. It's a six-minute movie, approximately. And then we'll continue the conversation after that. I'm now sharing my screen. Is this visible? Yes, it is, Rajiv.
Everyone back. Over to you, Ritu. Thank you, Rajiv, for a beautiful talk and the inspiration behind this exhibition. And I'm so excited to see all the artists. We have got one, two, seven countries already have joined in, despite the you know time zone constraint. Welcome all. So now we would like to hear from all of you. What is your you know view of this initiative and how you felt through all this journey of two and a half months? So, uh, should I start from Janet? Please unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. <laughs> Always the same. Sorry. So yeah. now, hello again. Oh, I'm so excited to all of you to see you and meet you here. Um, yes, this is the great. And this time, it's so easy to meet each other. And yes, Mr. Mr. Kumar, um, I feel the same with um, we all calligraphers, artists have to meet each other and talk together about our ideas. And so we can collect new ideas. I'm so um, impressed from, from what you make this video with all these artworks are so marvelous. Um, I made by myself, I'm coming from the town of Brava Grimm, so it's um, a real topic for me, you know, all Cinderella or um, all fairy tales. So I picked this about speech and put in one um, the flag colors, black gold and red are the colors from germany and the brother grimms came from germany so i take one piece of jacob grimm and he said our language is also our history so we calligraphers have to keep and remember our own history and tell that for the future we can just reach the future in, in peace times if we have remember uh, the history and have to tell that um, all the scripts also, we have to, as calligrapher, we have to uh, know the past because we have to learn all of the scripts and feel the scripts and feel the history. So when we um, reach this and know all the scripts we can we are able to reach new scripts for the future make our own um, artworks with new and so we are perhaps a piece of history in the past in the future they can uh, see what we tell and and put for for the youngest. So we are um, also storytellers. I think so. This is my intention to to keep the script and one piece to make new of it to tell a story with calligraphy. So this was my intention and to keep the diversity of the language. Yes, mother tongue is so um, um, needful topic today, I think so. All getting more global and more um, together, it is good. Yes, we need English to talk and understand together, but we also need mother tongue um, don't forget the old things. They are not all bad. So we have to keep the old things 
and the new things and keep it peaceful together. This is my, my heartbeat. So this is the topic about my, my uh, first work. The second was Rumpelstilzchen. It's on a fairy tale from the Brothers Grimm. And I made it, um, he danced in the woods, in a dark wood, always on the fire. And he dancing and dancing and saying, Oh, wie gut, dass niemand weiß, dass ich Rumpelstilzchen heiße. Means he always saying, oh, it's so good that no one knows my name. Because if no one knows my name, I can put the child from the king's screen. And he's so ugly and bad and he want to put the king's daughter. But one under the tree, hear this and hear the name. And on the second day, he said, oh, I know your name. I know that your name is Rumpelstilzchen. And so in my calligraphy, I danced with a pen around and around and around like the Rumpelstilzchen is dancing on the fire. This is my, this is all I, I have <laughs> made, yes. Beautiful, Janet. Thank you so much for sharing this. You know, that dancing part is so interesting. We wouldn't have known it until you told us like this because that was not written in your inspiration also. So that's beautiful. <laughs> so much. Your, your thoughts of, you Thank know, you. Are so much resonate with our Bhasha Akriti's thoughts. So we, we really have gelled very well. And I'm so thankful for you to come on board and, you know, work on this beautiful project with us. Thank you, Janet. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you to you all. Thank you. Uh, now, can I invite uh, Marta Let? Can yeah, you, can you mute Hello. yourself? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, look, I, I'm so incredibly excited to be part of this. Um, so I'm in Australia. I'm in a, uh, a rural valley in the north part of Victoria uh, near... New South Wales. Um, I, um, it's interesting, uh, something particular that uh, Rajiv said about expressing um, even the, the anger or other things that happen in life um, resonated with me. Um, a piece I did um, uh, many years ago was my story of domestic violence and I put that into a calligraphy piece um, and it now has its own life um, actually in a courthouse uh, in the room where um, the people wait for their, you know, um, domestic violence court hearings to come up. Uh, so it's, it's doing its own work. It has its own life now. Um, but I do think it's very important to um, that, you know, when something touches you very deeply that you find a way to express that and get it out. Um, and that was a really important journey at that time. Um, I also have used it to um, express to a family member um, my interpretation of what they were going through in their journey with cancer. And so the words and what I put into calligraphy really was how I saw their strength and, um, and part of their journey. Um, so those were sort of two things that resonated with me from what Rajiv said. Um, and then with Jeanette talking about um, our, our history, uh, for me in Australia as a white woman born here, um, it's, there's always been some sense of struggle with identity. Uh, my parentage is from Germany um, on one side of my family and the other side is um, uh, English, Irish. So I have a very strong identification with, um, with Celtic themes. Um, I feel very strongly that pull to, um, to Ireland particularly um, and to some of the... Um, uh, the Celtic styles that came out of um, out of Germany. So a lot of my work uh, has a Celtic theme 
to it. So you see that in one of my pieces called Celtic Wisdom. Yes. And, uh, and that one also speaks very strongly about environmental themes. And so, you know, environmental sustainability is, um, is a really strong thing through a lot of my work. And it's, it's a historic um, piece uh, from a little book of Celtic Wisdom. Uh, but it speaks very strongly of how I feel um, about our connection to to Earth and um, and our part in in the whole web of uh, life. How everything is interconnected. So the, that's what the Celtic wisdom piece um, very much sort of reflects some of what uh, Jeanette was saying about history and connection to history and honouring that. Um, and then the other two pieces that I put in um, are completely different approach um, is, is sort of having this completely modern approach with the calligraphy and uh, playing, just playing with the lettering. So there's there's no other form of, um, of design elements. Everything in there is created by letter forms and it's nothing's planned. You start with a couple of little lettering design elements and then it just grows from there and you don't know where you're going. It is just it just takes you. Um, and the, the two quotes there were particularly uh, important to me. One for this one was um, uh, where uh, spoken words fly away, written words remain. Um, I thought was particularly um, a good one for this exhibition. And, uh, and the other one uh, was uh, a quote from the Dalai Lama about um, being optimistic. And I think we all need a bit of that right now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. This was really lovely and a very touching story indeed. We hope that we'll be working together again in the future. Thank you so oh, much. Love to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for collaborating and being here today. Thank you. Thank you. So can I now ask our youngest calligraphy artist, Ashna, to you know give us uh, her thoughts on her inspiration? Ashna, please. Yeah. Uh, so, firstly, I would um, like to thank Bhasha Kriti, IGNCA, UNESCO for creating such a dynamic platform for us artists and calligraphers to present work in our mother tongues. Uh, my artwork is named Karmyok, which if you see the shlokas from uh, Karmyok chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the entire Bhagavad Gita is a conversation between Krishnaji and uh, Arjun. But this particular chapter was about Arjun's dilemma, whether or not he should go at war uh, with his siblings. So uh, Sri Krishnaji's basically telling him that as a warrior, you are supposed to go at war for the greater good. You can't go at war for yourself, but for, as a warrior, it's your karma and your dharma to go to war for the greater good. Karma is somehow the most, you know, confused word. People don't understand it. It's basically your work being true and selfless to what you do, your purpose in, in life. And you have to do it without any selfish motives, without hoping for something good to happen. You can't work with expectations of something coming back to you. Because if you're working with expectations, you will never do justice to your work. Because there will be times when you'll be working and not getting results. And then you'll be like, I'm not getting results, so let's not work. As, as we all know, your primary responsibility is to be honest and just and be truly in sync with your work without expectations. As in English, so in Hindi we say dharm, your karma is your dharm. In English you say work is worship. So you are supposed to work with all honesty. If you're giving your 100%, that's it. Your work ends there. Obviously it'll come back. You're, you're the center of the world, the sphere of influence works, what goes around comes around. But if you're hoping for something to come around and work for you, then you're not being honest to your work because your work is your responsibility. 
just that, not the result that comes after it. So as this is my debut project, so I thought this was the best way to, you know, present my karma by making artwork on karma. So that's, that's the story behind my inspiration. Thanks, Ashna. That was a lovely story. And all the best for you on your future endeavors. So you can mute yourself now. And I'd like to invite now Ms. Carrie Wouters from Belgium to tell us her story. Welcome, Carrie. Hi, everybody. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kumar and Mr. Smatu for making it possible for all of us in participating in this wonderful project. Uh, certainly because it's about language, which is a topic uh, which is very near to my heart. Um, uh, as a calligrapher, I'm very aware of the uh, respect that uh, tradition in history and culture uh, is a very big part of what we are doing. We are a kind of uh, translating emotions. We are translating text into a work, an artwork. And even when I'm teaching uh, younger uh, people uh, in calligraphy lessons, I always talk about that respect. And the respect for me starts uh, with working with the right materials. So in my piece, which I did about uh, Ronas van der Velde, he is, uh, uh, he's, he, uh, is uh, he died now, but he, um, he was very much aware of uh, our language and keeping our language alive. And he did it in singing songs. So that's, that's another part of keeping a language alive. Um, so I decided to work with pigments, uh, the colors which are now very close to the place I'm living. Um, and the text I chose from his uh, legacy is about uh, the change of seasons. Uh, and I thought that was something which is happening all over the world, and especially in these pandemic times, it is something that's the only thing that's moving right now. Uh, the seasons are telling us that life is really going on. Uh, we all are sitting at home and uh, trying to, to move as less as possible, uh, but life is continuing. And that was an important uh, input on working with it. And I agree completely with Mr. Kumar's um, explanation before about telling a story. Um, in your work as a calligrapher, it's not just about writing letters. That's the first part you do, writing, uh, learning a script, learning a calligraphic hand, and then combining that hand as best as possible with the text you have chosen and the reason why you have chosen that text. So there's a lot of emotion involved. Um, and then you have to translate everything uh, in a way that uh, there is a lot of things going on in your work, but not too much. You only have one pair of eyes. So there are only two eyes that can watch. So you don't have to show too much. Leave a little bit uh, open space for other people because they look at your work with their backpack of uh, experience. And it's completely different from what you may be uh, intended to tell, but that's the richness. Uh, and then if you have a communication going, if you have a dialogue going, uh, that's the most important thing about uh, starting working with calligraphy for me. I hope that's enough. Yeah, that's great. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much. That was Carrie Waters from Belgium. I'm so excited. You know, we have so many countries, you know, more people are joining in and, you know, we are really getting to hear everybody's story. This is even more exciting than the artworks now because I know exactly what thought went behind while making those. So now let me call upon Ms. Bettina Na from Argentina. Hello. I'll, yeah, I'll just, Hello. just excuse me for the pronunciation because I would not know exactly how to pronounce your name. So please pardon me for that. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> hello, uh, everybody. It's an honor to be here. And I have to say hello from my colleague, Maria Eugenia, who's also in the exhibition. <laughs> uh, 
Um, we are from Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina, and um, and we were very surprised with the invitation and very happy. <laughs> and we are. Um, I wanted to congratulate everybody for the artwork, which is amazing. And I really, really, it's surprising to see how this was put up. I, I, I enjoyed the video a lot. And, um, and well, we are calligraphers uh, from a long time now. And um, uh, I, I agree with, with this idea of telling a story through the artwork. This has always been the way I looked at letters. And in Argentina, there is something interesting going on with language, a bit like Marta told. We are a country of immigrants, so um, I my, actually my, we speak Spanish in Argentina, in Argentina, but my mother my mother tongue is German <laughs> because I'm from a German family, and my colleague Eugenia is from an Italian background, so her, she has Italian as mother language. So there's a lot of languages going on over here. And um, so I was always intrigued in combining all this, those languages that are part of my, my story, my personal story in my artwork. So for this particular pieces, I worked with um, a beautiful little book uh, from an art historian called Ernst Gombrich. And um, he wrote a history of the world for, child, for young readers. And he has this vision that history is like a long stream like like a big stream of little histories from everybody in the world and um so i was very very moved by this image and i have been working on this stream with all these histories and i like to to write these histories in german and spanish and english because these are the, the languages i know and i was imagining all these these personal histories taught in all these languages of different people from the world and i also like the idea that um our personal history is very very tiny in all this big stream but we need each personal history to make the world history we we are part of it even if we are only a very very small particle and by thinking about this situation we are all experiencing around the world what what piece will this be of of this history so I have experimenting with layers of writing, um, like all these histories coming together and, and making this whole image of the stream. This is the first uh, of my three pieces. And, and then uh, actually all the three of them are, are about all this language thing, about German and, and, and layers of calligraphy trying to tell the story of, of all of us. And I've always been trying to go beyond the shape of letters. Um, I think that's something wonderful calligraphy has, mod like calligraphy nowadays, that I, we don't have a tradition in Argentina, so I, I learned um, with the European writing tradition, but I like to break the shapes of the letters and try to communicate with the shapes and not only with the, with the, what's, with the meaning of, of the letters itself. So, that's that's always that moves me around around my art pieces so well <laughs> i don't want to make it too long but that's a bit what's behind my 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 pieces and and well again thank you and it has been wonderful to hear each of you your stories thank, thank you, you. Ms. Ritu, as well <laughs> thank you Bettina. thank you thank you so much thanks for sharing your story uh, now can i invite Anne marie uh, Bettina, can you just uh, put your speaker off? Yeah. And Mary from, yeah. From South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity in joining you. It's been such a privilege to watch all the beautiful artworks and to interact with such exciting people. So thank you so much to Mr. Kumar and you, Ritu. It's just been wonderful. And welcome everybody. Aren't we so privileged to be together using a craft and an art 
that we absolutely passionate about. And when I look at the beautiful um, calligraphy that's on, on show, on the exhibition, and my humble pieces, I'm just overwhelmed. So thank you. But what I have been doing over the last few months, and in fact, the past year, like everybody, I'm confined to home. I'm under house arrest because of the virus. And it couldn't be more exciting in a way because we've had to use our talent to produce work. And Picasso said, painting is just another way, way of keeping a diary. And I was thinking of what Carrie said, she's been making marks and Marta, they've been making marks on paper to express a certain way. And that was what I was doing. So my diary of last year is here in calligraphy and um, I'm continuing to do this wonderful output of work using very often the colors of our country because our country is as complicated as your countries are with numerous languages. Afrikaans, I see my friend Dermi is down there. Afrikaans being the youngest language, Sanskrit, Tamil, the oldest. And I think it's the most remarkable way that we come together. So the, the, the backgrounds that I use are often very dramatic very earthy in color but the one that i chose and that i was very interested to see was accepted was the this little piece which is the silence of hope and i thought to myself that as we sit listening to each other and inscribing these beautiful letter forms we are so privileged to be creating our own diaries for maybe our children, our grandchildren, who knows. And the other one, the other quote that I love, and don't calligraphers collect quotes all the time. We find them here, we find them there. There's another one um, that says, be mindful when it comes to your words. And the words that I would, was choosing was, were love. One was the word, the one was hope, all written in a very different way from the traditional form of calligraphy. And I was very intrigued from the lady in Argentina that her tradition goes to Europe, not necessarily to Argentina. And she in fact is creating a tradition down in Argentina. And it's uh, just so wonderful to be able to, to inscribe these letters, break them up. And you might be interested to know, I've just started writing and learning to write Sanskrit. And the most beautiful uh, depth of understanding in those letter forms is going to keep me, I'm going to have to live to 140 because I know it's not going to take me one year to learn Sanskrit or any other lettering and I, and I think that's what keeps us going as calligraphers, this wonderful wealth that we share together and within the world, I mean, look at what we look like. So I want to say to you all, Raise your words, not your voice. And I think calligraphers do the most remarkable job. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie, for such beautiful words. And I'm sure we'll work together in our next project soon. Oh, well, I do hope so. Thank you. Thank you. So now can I invite uh, Ms. Dimru? Are you there? I'm just unmuting no, and putting no, my name. No, no. Jeremy, yeah. there she is. You're yeah. from South Africa, right? Yes, tell yes. me. I'm in Cape Town. Uh, just before I start, uh, uh, apologies from Lizette. She had to rush off. Uh, the family farm is very close to felt fire, so she's got a personal crisis. She would have loved to be here. Um, I am a left-handed hobby calligrapher. And I've made the most wonderful friends, which I now call my family. 
through calligraphy. It is amazing. Um, yeah, thank you for the invitation. What I've done is, um, as Anne-Marie mentioned, uh, Afrikaans, which is my mother tongue, is sounds very close to Flemish and Dutch, I suppose, um, is the youngest language in the world. So I took two um, poets. The one, Lidi de Vol, is a um, contemporary poet, um, uh, posting quite regularly at the moment still. And then the other one is N.P.A. van Beek Low, which is when we had prescribed poems at school, that's one of those poems that you needed to analyze, one of our very well-known poets that we had. And yeah, I just went to look for poems of hope and peace. We actually spent a lot of time last year sharing quotes and poems and words of hope and peace and uh, through the whole lockdown period with each other. Yeah, and I thought of not taking a traditional script like Gothic or Italic or something like that because something to reflect the Afrikaans, which is still shaping. We're like 140 years, the language, I guess. And yes, yeah, so I thought let's take something by, by more basic and raw and not too defined. That was my thinking behind that writing. Um, yeah, and that is basically what I had in mind. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's wonderful Thank to you. see Thank everybody's so work. Much. Thank you so okay. much. Thanks for sharing your beautiful story and we and telling us that Afrikaans is the youngest language. We didn't know it till then. So it's, you know, we are gaining knowledge <laughs> too. <laughs> Very interesting. Thank you. Thank so you. now can I can I invite Mr. Aziz? Are you there, Mr. Mohammed Aziz? From Egypt? Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you? Yeah, hi. Can you hear my voice? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, it's, a, it's a very nice uh, to be a part of this great initiative and uh, to be one of those marvelous artists all over the world. <laughs> and, uh, please, I have to tell you something first. Uh, you have to play puzzle words just to get what, I'm, what uh, comes out from my mouth, as my English is very bad, by the way. <laughs> So, uh, about my uh, to be in calligraphy, uh, calligraphy is, is not just a, a profession or just a work uh, I make. Uh, it starts with me, it started with me uh, since I was uh, maybe seven uh, from my dad, and uh, it comes through time to be uh, good and good. But the real story starts when uh, I was in exhibition uh, with my friend and uh, some of the attendees uh, asked a, a question. Uh, how is it possible to make such an artwork with the Arabic calligraphy? Uh, uh, during to my uh, uh, lack of experience uh, uh, now uh, that time, uh, my friend, uh, he answered the, the, that one that it's very hard to make such uh, an artwork with calligraphy. It takes time and effort and blah, blah, blah. Uh, that moment, I, I couldn't swallow this answer. As uh, in my opinion, uh, calligraphy is the, 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 the real tool of calligraphy is, uh, is not just a brush or pen or even the hand. The real tool of calligraphy is the soul itself. It comes out from my soul. It's it's not uh, uh, it's not just a tool and a paper uh, to make uh, that artwork, and to make such uh, uh, an expressive uh, artwork and the touchy one, you have uh, the the artist uh, must be saturated first with the feeling, in order to to uh, to get uh, to find the opportunity to make it a, a real artwork. Uh, so I don't want to, uh, to make it hard for you, for, for you and I, <laughs> I am very confused now, but I have to tell you something. Uh, it's a quote from uh, P.T. Barnum who said, the noblest art is that of making others happy. And in my opinion, uh, calligraphy is, uh, is the best art uh, that makes me happy and also make others happy. Uh, yes. As uh, it's not about uh, uh, 
just an uh, an ordinary artwork. It's about um, a track, a track for the eye from a point to the other one. That that is the uh, the successful uh, artwork in calligraphy, according to me. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of inspirations uh, to make such uh, a good calligraphy artwork. Uh, it's not just about to imitate or to copy uh, any artwork or any uh, previous work for others. It, it's, uh, as, I, as I told you before, it has to be first, I, I have to be saturated with the feeling in order to make it uh, an artwork. So I don't want to make it hard for you. Uh, this is my story about calligraphy and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aziz. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, can I ask Ms. Uchi, Uschi, right? Is Ms. from Germany? Uschi, are you there? Uschi? Uh, we'll wait for her. So in the time, meantime, we can ask uh, uh, Jovanika Sorgit, right? From Serbia. Hello. Hi. My name is Jovanika. Yeah, can we have your story? <laughs> Hi. Yes. <laughs> Let's hear it from I'm you. I am Jovanka Sorgit, Sorgit from Serbia, Belgrade. How are you? Good, good. Tell us, tell us about your artwork, your inspiration, and your journey with us. Yes, the exhibition is very, very good, and it saw me very, very glad that I'm participation. My English is is not good, and I can uh, speak slowly. Do you understand me? Yes, we do. Yes, yes. Uh, I prefer uh, Cyrillic letters from my my country and my people, and uh, it's me very uh, glad that I'm uh, a participant of the exhibition. And uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's a great pleasure, and uh, I believe there will uh, be many, many, many more this uh, exhibition. Thank you. Do you plan? Do you plan for next year or? Um... Yes, yes. We yes. will do it this year only. We will get back to you soon. Yes, I greet to organizing and participants very well. Nati, greetings for all, all our uh, participants. Goodbye. Thank you. I can see very short. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Ushi... Thank you. Is Ushji back? Hello, we Ushji did join in, so uh, hello, is Ushji here listening to us? Do you speak Listen. to me? Yeah, I do, I do, Ushji. I don't understand. Who is that? No. No, you can now you can put yourself on mute. Yuanika, you can put yourself on mute now. Speaker off. Yeah. Ushchi, we have you on the panel, but we can't hear you. We will have to wrap up soon. So can you please join us? I don't know whether she's able to hear us or not. She was from Germany, but uh, she's, I'm seeing her on the panel, but uh, she's not probably getting the connection or something. So anyway, I think uh, that's about it. That's the, all, all the artists that we have heard. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey. And I'm, I'm really moved, intrigued. The stories were really amazing. And we really want to, you know, take it forward. And I'm sure together we'll 
create such a story together that our future generations will cherish those stories. So with that thought, I'll take leave from you and you know, good day to you all. We'll move to the next session and you can participate as a participant now. Thank you. Thank you.
जसबीर जी कैन वी स्विच दिस ऑफ नाउ वीडियो